Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode number 75 of Preston Jensen's podcast. Yes, you heard that right. Episode number 75. And if you saw, if you're watching the video side of things, you saw me hold up my uh, soundboard uh, that shows all the stuff I have on my Rodecaster Pro as far as the sound buttons. Um, that's something that's kind of underrated when you buy the Rodecaster Pro. Um, they have these cool little whiteboard things that show you your sound pads, and then you can just write on all the different stuff you have so you can remember them during your live show or, like in my case, in a recorded show like this. I know it came in very handy when I was doing my Rodecaster Pro prank when I was trying to get a bunch of people to respond to pre-recorded phrases. Um, if you haven't heard or seen that video, uh, head on over to my YouTube channel. Uh, it was kind of funny at points. Um, I hope to do that again in the future with uh, a lot more specific phrases and see if I can get people to go on a lot uh, longer. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, head on over to my YouTube channel and check that out. But episode number 75, and I am just going to be talking about technology today and uh, a lot about my GoPro 10. Um, if you guys have been following me on YouTube, uh, you know that I just got the GoPro 10. I talked about it in my last podcast. And uh, right after I received it in the mail, I saw a lot of creators on Twitter talking about, oh, I sent my GoPro back. Um, I'm kind of disappointed in my GoPro 10. Uh, I saw about a million videos about the GoPro overheating. And so I thought, man, I, I'm really nervous about this decision that I made because it is a lot of money. Um, I wasn't very excited. If uh, any of you know me well, you know that I don't like spending a lot of money, even though uh, that sounds ridiculous when you look around this uh, studio and I've got the Rodecaster Pro, I've got the Mac Mini, I've got the Sony a6400. Um, but if you know me uh, in real life, you know that I'm uh, uh, kind of cheap. I don't like to spend my money. Um, and when I do, I really like to research things. And I did all my research on the GoPro and all of these negatives that I was seeing uh, was, I, I took them with a grain of salt and uh, I was nervous when I purchased it because I thought, oh man, am I just so hyped up on this product that I'm overlooking all of these uh, shortcomings of it? Or are these things people are just looking for uh, to get good videos on YouTube or good topics on podcasting. Um, and, uh, I even mentioned to my wife, maybe, uh, I got it in the mail. I saw all this stuff coming out about, uh, the negatives of the GoPro 10. And I thought, you know what, maybe I should just send it back too, because, uh, DJI is going to be releasing their, uh, uh, mobile camera, uh, soon as well. And they always come out with fantastic products. So I thought, ah, maybe I should just go with that. Uh, the biggest negative I saw with that camera was that it doesn't look like the outside lens is replaceable. And for someone who's used uh, 360 cameras, uh, they've got the same kind of lens where it's kind of bubbled out. And uh, that makes me nervous because when I'm using my GoPro or when I've been using my GoPros in the past, um, I'm using them in more risky situations. I like to mount them onto my car. I like to, uh, you know, do different things with it that if I had a lens that would fall over and crack, I feel like uh, I would like to have the option of replacing it. Now, that camera hasn't come out yet, and it may still be replaceable. I don't know. It just didn't look like it from the pictures I was seeing. But the thing I liked about the GoPro is... I've had one in the past. I had the GoPro 3, and I was extremely excited about that when I got that. And it seemed like that one was pretty rock solid. I mean, I didn't have any problems with it. 
Uh, I talked about in my last episode, I was able to take that scuba diving and I had a lot of fun with that. And so basically I thought, you know what, I'm going to get this GoPro 10 because I'm familiar with it. I'm familiar with the ecosystem. And, uh, when I received it in the mail, I opened it up, I got it running, and I thought, man, I just do not get what all these negative things are that people are talking about. Uh, I totally understand the overheating aspect of things. I've done videos on my Sony a6400 overheating, and I've actually made a video about that and how I fixed it. Um, you can check that out on my YouTube channel if you haven't seen that. Um, but uh, I got the GoPro and this past weekend, my wife and my, my daughter and I went on a little family vacation and I brought the GoPro with, uh, the only camera I brought with, I decided I'm not going to bring my drone. I'm not going to bring my uh, main camera because I thought, you know what? I do this during the week and it's, it's really kind of becoming like work, uh, as much as I hate to say that because I do love making the podcast and I do like making videos uh, but I thought just for the weekend, I'm not going to bring any camera equipment. I'm just going to enjoy the weekend. But I was pleasantly surprised when I brought out the GoPro and, uh, actually my wife used it before I did. Uh, she used it on a time warp warp. We went through a very scenic, uh, uh, stretch uh, for any of those who are around here listening to this podcast, we went from Park Rapids uh, up to um, Clearwater, or it's called Long Lake Campground, and it's about a 40-minute drive, and the road is wrapped in uh, trees, and the trees are in full color right now. So uh, basically, I didn't have any GoPro mounts along. Uh, I just set my baseball cap on the dash, and I had her, uh, Chelsea, set up my GoPro on that and set up time warp mode. And I had zero expectations for that time warp. Um, but I was pleasantly surprised when it was finished. The video was smooth. Uh, I didn't have any overheating issues that whole time. However, just in case, I blasted the cold air just in case that would help. And I flipped the legs down on the bottom just in case uh, those legs blocking the heat sinks was an issue. But I didn't have any overheating issues, and it was probably going for a half hour uh, with no problems. And I was extremely impressed at how smooth the time warp was, especially because, you know, it's not on a gimbal. And uh, I'm used to having my Sony a6400 that doesn't have any in-body uh, stabilization. And I'm used to my uh, GoPro 3 that has no stabilization as well. So uh, when I took out the GoPro and I followed my daughter around uh, filming her playing on the beach and uh, uh, playing on the dock and uh, just stuff around uh, that campground, uh, I was absolutely shocked at how stable the footage was. And uh, I guess I've been around uh, gimbals and I've used... Uh, cameras on gimbals, my Sony a6400. And I don't know if I can achieve that stability with a gimbal and my camera. I'm sure if you dial it in and I'm sure if you run stabilization after the fact, um, you probably could, but I was absolutely blown away. It's amazing. And uh, I'm excited to see all the uh, use cases I'll have for this GoPro because I feel like I'm not a vlogger. I haven't really vlogged. I've vlogged one time on my YouTube channel, and that's my most hated video on my channel. Uh, but I thought, you know, I really like challenges. And so uh, knowing that that's my most hated video on my channel, I want to remake that one, and I want to make videos like that to prove that, hey, I can do it. I can get better. Um, <laughs> I, I'm not just a failure at vlogging. However... I totally get it. I watched that video and I didn't like it either. And it's the one I did on astrophotography. And the funny thing about it is it's the most hated video, but it's one of my most viewed videos as well. So I feel like people want to know what I had in the title and that's uh, how to shoot astrophotography 
with my Sony a6400 and the 16 millimeter Sigma lens. And I feel like now that I have this GoPro, however, they say that it's not very good in low light. And that makes sense because it's going to have a much smaller sensor. But I feel like if I have the proper lighting and, uh, it's just nice to have a second camera when I'm doing a vlog or a demonstration so I can actually film myself using my main camera. And I think that having the GoPro will give me the ability to get the information across that people want to see with that uh, video. And if, you're, if you've seen that video and you clicked on my channel and you wanted information on astrophotography, uh, let me know in the description because... Um, the more people I see that want to know about that, the more likely I'll be to make um, a follow-up video. Uh, some of the other things I'm excited about uh, is I haven't even used the GoPro Media Mod. And uh, I guess uh, the funny thing about the Media Mod that I notice, if you watch my unboxing of the GoPro, is it says it's the media mod for the GoPro Hero 9. However, it's compatible with the GoPro Hero 10. And I noticed that with the add-on uh, battery charger that I got in the package that I ordered, uh, GoPro's advertising that it's $200 off, uh, but you have to subscribe to their uh, subscription uh, service for one year. And you also get a dual battery charger, and an extra battery in that kit. So I thought, you know what, that's a no-brainer. I'm going to order that kit. Um, I am not a fan of subscriptions, and after the year, I'll probably just cancel that subscription. But in order to get the discount, I thought I'd try it out. Uh, maybe I'll be surprised. Maybe I'll uh, continue with that subscription because that was another thing I was kind of shocked about on this vacation is – how easy it was to use the GoPro app with um, the GoPro. And usually I don't like using apps to run a camera, but this one seemed like it was pretty usable. And I did like that uh, my content was right on my phone right after I took it. And it was also being downloaded to the cloud uh, with unlimited storage, supposedly, uh, if you're part of that GoPro subscription. Um, and it was kind of fun because in the past, you'd have to take a video, you'd have to go back to your hotel, you'd have to plug in your uh, camera to a computer, you'd have to offload it, you'd have to edit it, then you'd have to think of a way to get it back to your phone. Now, it's all very simple. You take it on your GoPro, you can sync it right over to your phone and text your friends, uh, which I did a lot. Uh, of this weekend. Uh, whenever I took a video, I was texting my family, texting my friends. Uh, you can edit it, the videos right onto your phone. It's got some cool quick mode, so it can uh, basically edit little videos for you. Uh, so a lot of neat features for content creators. I know there's a lot of creators out there that uh, have dove a lot deeper into that software than I have, but uh, it's exciting to see where uh, the future is going to um go as far as GoPros because I feel like with this one, it is everything I've wanted the three to be. It's uh, the, and the biggest feature for me, I know they've had it for many years now is the stabilization, uh, the um, hyper smooth or whatever they call it. I know each camera has their own uh, name for it, but uh, it's extremely good, and uh, for that reason alone, I'm happy that I got the camera because I'm able to achieve uh, filming activities much more smoothly than I have in the past. And uh, so hopefully I'll be able to bring a lot cooler content to you guys. Um, getting back to the media mod, uh, like I said, I haven't opened this up yet. Uh, one of the things I found extremely funny is that this media mod has a built-in microphone on it. And from all the reviews I've been reading, uh, that microphone is supposedly not as good as the GoPro Hero 10 on-body microphone. And I think that's kind of hard to believe. If you're putting a microphone on a product, you'd think it would be better than what the camera already has. 
Now, I'm not going to be using that microphone anyway. Maybe I'll use it to run a couple tests just to show you guys that, no, it's not as good. Or, hey, actually, it is <laughs> a lot better than people think. Um, I'm excited to use this media mod for one reason, and that is to use my uh, Rode Wireless Go microphone system. Um, there's a couple of shots I'm excited to try and get. I might have talked about that in my last episode, but uh, yeah, I, I think this GoPro, uh, so far, I've had zero overheating issues. I haven't had really any issues that I can think of um, with my initial weekend of using it. Um, if I come across any issues that I have, I'll probably talk about that in the podcast. Uh, might make a video on it if I come across anything. I'm crossing my fingers. I'm hoping there's no issues with it because uh, I'm loving it so far. Uh, another thing I want to talk about is all of the cool technology that's coming out and everyone's saying, ah, oh, they're uh, going broke getting all this technology. But I'm kind of sitting back uh, thinking of how excited I am about all the new updates that are coming out from the technology that I've already got. Uh, just when I logged into Ecamm Live, I noticed that there was a new Ecamm Live update, and I've already seen some videos on that update, and I don't, that's going to bring a lot of cool features as far as setting up overlays and new cool things with interviews. Um, I'm, I'm going to be... Uh, it's going to be fun to see all the different overlays and it'll, it'll make people's presentations a lot more professional. Um, if people are seeing a lot of interviews with cool borders around it, a lot of times they're using Ecamm live and it's as easy as setting up an overlay. So uh, if you're watching on my YouTube channel right now and you're seeing the subscribe button come up, that's just an overlay. If you're seeing my website pop up, that's an overlay. Um, if you see this ticker going across the bottom, all these things are overlays that I'm actually running on a stream deck and stream deck also just came out with a new update. Um, final cut pro also came up with a brand new update. iPhone just came out with a new update. So a lot of the technology that you probably already have is coming out with new updates, basically making them new technology. So, and the best part about all these updates is most of them, all of them that I just talked about are free. So if you guys want to uh, get new and improved technology, a lot of times you can just look at uh, settings and see, hey, I've got a new update. Uh, this is going to bring a lot of cool features to the equipment that I've already got. So make sure you look at that if uh, you're looking at getting new equipment. A lot of times the software that uh, you can download basically makes what you have new. And uh, so there's a lot of features I've got to uh, look into. Um, when a new feature or a new software comes out for a product, I like to watch videos on YouTube to learn everything about them. And so I feel like I've got a lot of content I want to catch up on because I really want to get into Final Cut Pro. I'm extremely excited about the tracking technology that's now built into Final Cut. I've played with it a little bit. I've had uh, some good results with it, and I've had a couple eh, results with it as well just because uh, I think there's a few bugs with the tracker right now. I'm sure they're all bugs that will be fixed in the future um, I'm, it, it always seems like when Apple releases an update and people find a few little bugs, they update it again real quick. And so I'm excited to see, uh, how quickly they'll get all the bugs worked out with the tracker that they provided. But that is something that's very cool because I have looked at buying a tracker, uh, in the past. And it seems like this one is going to work quite well with a lot of the stuff I do. So uh, thank you for uh, listening to episode number 75. I am extremely excited that I've made it to episode 75. You know, when I started this podcast, uh, I wouldn't have been surprised if it didn't make it past episode number 10. And I guess I have to uh, 
say that the reason I've got to 75 is because of the great guests I've had, uh, a lot of the great conversations I've had through this podcast, and a lot of the great friendships I've developed by having this podcast that wouldn't have been possible if this hadn't all started. So I really appreciate all of the kind words that I've been getting uh, in regards to this podcast, and I'm glad you guys are liking it. I'm glad you're listening. Uh, That always helps. I appreciate the subscriptions on YouTube and the thumbs up and all the good reviews. Thank you for listening. Uh, I've got a lot of fun stuff planned for the future. Uh, I've been talking to a lot of good guests and uh, just got to get them all scheduled and lined up. And uh, uh, you guys are going to like to hear from a lot of these content creators and Uh, Not not just content creators either, just uh, a lot of great people I have lined up for the future. So I'm really excited to talk about all that. Um, Thanks again for listening. I look forward to talking to you guys again next week. Thank you.